Build to order or BTO flats for eligible singles are in hot demand since yesterday's launch with all areas oversubscribed. The build to order two room flats for eligible singles are in hot demand. The flats were just launched yesterday but already oversubscribed. The more popular ones are in Senkang. There are 231 two room flats there, of which the majority will be allocated to households. For those set aside for singles, they are 27 times subscribed as of 5 pm today. In Yishun, which has 288 units, the application rate for singles is 12. Sarah Gross with more. It's the first time singles will be able to buy flats directly from the HDB. Market analysts say one reason for the high take-up rate could be because not enough flats have been allocated. The government has also extended other housing grants to eligible singles, making the flats more affordable. One reason why the Senkang flats are more popular could be that they are nearer an MRT station. Industry players say this high demand does not come as a surprise, as it is the first time BTO flats are available to singles. And like other schemes, there could be ways applicants could take advantage of it. Some single friends also point out to me that if a couple is uh, dating and not married, they are eligible for two BTO flats. But in uh, reality, maybe the boyfriend or the girlfriend could just move in with the partner and they can just keep the other BTO flats for capital appreciation. Um, this is one possible loophole for the scheme. But I think the numbers wouldn't be very big because there are a lot of risks involved. Housing analysts also expect the single scheme to have a limited impact on resale flat prices due to different types of buyers. For example, those applying for a two-room flat are essentially those who could not afford to buy a resale flat in the past. Singles, although living on their own, should continue to build close ties with their extended families. And for the community, the mantra should be inclusiveness. Those were among the points raised by family psychologist Pauline Taestron. Commenting on the new housing option for singles, Professor Strawn said it's a good move that allows everyone to own their homes. But she said as more singles get the option and the means to set up home away from their families, bonds with the family and others should not be overlooked. A single who purchases a, their own flat you know, in their 30s, you know, life is good, right? But uh, if you fast forward, 30 years when they're in their 60s and 70s and they're still single, then it is very important for them to be in a community. So no matter how that family is defined, the, inter, you know, the, the interpersonal relationships must be maintained. So, I mean, that's a little bit of a cautionary note. Instead, intergenerational relationships must be built up based on quality interactions. As for the community, when it organizes events to draw neighbors together, it's important to look beyond the conventional family-centric programs. For whatever we do, whatever you know, initiatives we want to mainstream, always conscious about the fact that, you know, don't stereotype what the typical family is, right? But rather to have an inclusive kind of program and initiative where everyone feels, you know, comfortable about participating in. Professor Strawn also commented on what would happen if two individuals who own a flat under the joint single scheme decide to call off the partnership. The concern would be to ensure that, you know, when you have joint ownership of two persons who are not related to each other, then the question is, do we have mediation processes in place for when fights break out? 